Welcome to Share Talk, the only podcast where investors come first. Hello and welcome to Share Talk. Today I'm joined by Stephen Sanderson, who is CEO at UK Oil and Gas. How are you today, Steve? I'm good, thank you. How are you? I'm doing fine. We haven't spoken for a long time, and uh, obviously that was uh, an excuse for you to do something high impact, which you've just done. Uh, could you run us through the Turkish oil deal, please? Yeah, it's. Um, I think some people would um, see this as quite a departure, but um, I think I'd like to say that in no way does this adversely affect our uh, our UK portfolio. That still is our core. Uh, the way I would look at it is, um, you know, if we were in the hotel business and we had one hotel and we bought another one that was actually uh, a five star versus a four star, you know, we'd have two hotels and we'd have a bigger portfolio. This is exactly the same. We, uh, we've expanded our portfolio into something that we think is um, is as if not more exciting and uh, gives us a lot more um, scale of potential resources. Um, I think, uh, you know, basically it's got a low entry cost. Uh, we're paying, um, you know, a premium of only about two and a half, two to two and a half million dollars to get into what we think is, um, you know, a Premier League address. Um, it's oil appraisal. Um, oil has been found, tested in uh, in the Bajor, um structure. Um, oil has been seen and shows in, in the Rezan structure. So it's very much like our uh, Loxley and um, uh, Ariton uh, appraisal projects. In fact, you know, the, 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 the uncertainties are the same. Will this reservoir produce commercially viable rates and um, commercial volumes? Um, you know, it's uh, it's got a field along strike, um, along geological strike, um, uh, which basically has been producing since 2014. It's got wells that produce at 1,300 barrels a day. Um, there are fields around it at two 200 million barrels recoverable. That's that's far bigger than anything we see in the field. Um, so you know, for us, it's very exciting. Um, it's non-operated. We'll have a lot of technical input. But, you know, the hard work is going to be done by our new partners, Land in Middle East. They've got 60 years of experience in Turkey. They um, they produce oil and gas there. They have been doing for a long time. So, um, you know, it's 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 a, it's a another string to our bow. Um, right. And, and presumably uh, there won't be uh, too many planning issues uh, and other uh, blocks to progress. Uh, well, no, I mean, you know, I mean, uh, apart from, you know, the the... Why did we get into this? I mean, that's, you know, that's really what everyone asks. Um, well, obviously, it's opportunistic. Uh, we have said uh, in various RNSs and your reports that we're looking at new opportunities. We, we do that because basically, in order to grow a company, any company, in particular oil and gas company, you, you, you need to have new projects. You need to drill more wells. And, and that's what we're doing. And, um, and presumably now, post-COVID, with, when we're coming off a a minus forty dollar a barrel oil price. Uh, the opportunities are there. I mean, this must be presumably one of the uh, the, the the biggest dips that there's been in the sector, uh, or we're coming off that uh, even worse than two thousand and fourteen. Oh, uh, the, the, this is the biggest dip in the oil and gas sector historically. I mean, the uh, current oil well, when oil prices were down to twenty dollars a barrel, that was the same as uh, equivalent terms, uh, monetary and and dollar uh, corrected. You know, to nineteen the nineteen forties. So you know, forty dollars a barrel. The world's better. Um, you know, this this project in uh, Turkey makes good money at uh, forty dollars a barrel. Um, you know, the the operating costs are forecast based on uh, our partners' um, costs at the uh, East Sadak field, fifteen dollars a barrel, same as Horse Hill. Uh, the big difference, the big difference from a business point of view, let alone the geology, you know, which basically gives a scale two to three times Horse Hill for Bajor and maybe, you know, up to 10 times for Rezan. The big difference is the fact that you can monetize this very quickly. You don't have to go to Surrey County Council and get permission to drill it. And then when you found something, you don't have to go back to them and get permission to produce it. You have an obligation in uh, Turkish petroleum law to produce anything you find if it's commercially viable. So, you know, the payback on these projects, even if it was exactly the same as the UK, the payback would be 
months, not not the years that we're looking at. I mean, and don't get me wrong, the UK project's bloody good. But, you know, if we find one, you know, of, of the same scale even as, as our UK, we, we make more money more quickly, basically, in Turkey. Uh, but what we're looking at is not only that, but the scale is much larger. So we're exposing ourselves to a much bigger reserve and monetary prize. I mean, you know, we're potentially looking at, you know, 50 million barrels net um, reserves to, to UCOD in, in the, you know, their success case. That's worth, in present value t- terms, half a billion dollars, you know, so that's so that's you, not so bad. So there's a possibility of uh, UCOG uh, actually being... Uh uh, I suppose a TCOG, uh, but also being a mid a mid uh, t- a mid tier oil producer. Uh, over well, the- you know, I mean, you know, we 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 try to grow the business. Um, you know, there there are in any in any petroleum province, there's always a finite amount of opportunities. You know, we have good opportunities in the UK, but if we want to grow significantly, then then we have to look elsewhere. Not not in the UK, I'm sure. Okay, we can grow a bit more there. Clearly, we could go into the UK offshore, or we can go international. You know, so I think I think this is a natural progression for us, and I think people should see that that we're actually building the value of the company by by adding new projects. And would it be the, because I, have, I haven't interviewed you for a while, for a while now, but um, it, it does seem to be with with the perspective of, of of time that it's been red tape and bureaucracy which has been. Uh, the main uh, driver in the UK, and and you're 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 diversifying away from that, really. Well, I mean, you know, uh, one can only bang one's head against a brick wall so many times before it hurts. I mean, you know, we've had a very good track record of getting permissions. You know, our regulatory uh, 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 permissions uh, sort of ability has been probably the best in the industry. Um, you know, the Loxley thing is not dead yet. Um, and that, that, that was very surprising. But, you know, the, I think the fundamental point in any business, if you make significant capital investment, you want to see that back as quickly as possible. And that's, that's, that's doable in the UK, but all I'm saying is it's a lot easier than somewhere like Turkey, where basically they prioritize their domestic oil and gas because they, they need it. They don't want to rely on, on wholly on imports. I mean, they're basically only, you know, 90% of their uh, daily consumption is from exports. And, uh, you know, so therefore they, they value the, um, the, the security of domestic energy. Right. Just finally, when, uh, when will this uh, all come on stream or when is it expected to come on stream um, and, and deliver some income for you? Well, uh, you know, we, we expect, uh, dependent on, obviously on, on the weather, because the area in Turkey gets pretty cold in the winter. So if we can get in before, you know, the weather sets in, we might even drill the well before the end of the year. I mean, it will take us a couple of months uh, to get, you know, the, the Turkish government um, approval. And after that, you know, we're ready to rock. I mean, this is, uh, you know, 30 to 60 day well. If we were to drill it, you know, towards the end of the year, we could, um, you know, we'll test it and put it, if it's good, we'll, we can put it on production, you know, maybe even this year, early next year. Um, if, if we get in before the, if we get in after the winter, clearly it will be spring. Um, so, you know, we have to drill it before June next year in any case. Right, so, but, you know. But definitely within uh, private investor timelines, let's say. Well, yeah, I mean, you know, this is the attraction. I mean, not, 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 you know, it gives us cash flow, which, you know, if, if we keep drilling, um, you know, production wells there, some of that cash flow can then actually go towards funding our UK assets as well. So, you know, it's, um, you know, it's, it's not, it's, it's still, a, you know, a roll of the dice in, in some respects. Okay, we, we, the outcome is within a certain numbers of the dice, but, um, you know, it's um, it has all the benefits, if you like, of our uh, UK appraisal projects, but the scale and the rapidity of monetization is is much greater. And of course, you know, the the costs are half as much in the as they are in the UK. Three million dollars for a well versus six and a half to seven million dollars uh, for the same well in the UK. Okay. On that note, Stephen Starnison, CEO of uh, UK Oil and Gas, thank you very much indeed for joining us today. You're very welcome. Thank you for listening. Remember to visit our website for more news and other podcasts at www.share-talk.com.